Alright guys let's get straight into it. The manga I'm gonna put you on to today is called Alice in Borderland. Starting off, we see Duck Lips depressed inner thoughts about his life, while playing on what looks like if the Nintendo DS had an inbred cousin, that no one likes but still lets him hang around because they feel bad. You know, I've always appreciated how anime and manga express emotions so vividly. Like, it seems as if he has a combination of a rash, whiplash, and a bad makeup session this morning over just one part of his face. Just to show little Timmy waking up. Phenomenal. Oh yeah, and the fan service. For the boys, Chota speaks of his dream of being in a friends with benefits club at college. But he's realistic and knows some dreams stay dreams. But a man's got a dream, right? Alice looks like the type to be extremely smart but just not give a rat's ass about life. In other words, a lazy demon. Chota starts to mess around by trying to look at some thigh highs and ends up baiting Alice. Oh and Alice wanted to share with the class what his future occupation would be. Considering he's Asian, and I've watched too much Stephen He, yeah, that sounds about right. Honestly, he starts whining about basically how mundane his life is. Albeit, anxiety is a very real thing so, fair. Alice thinks he's slick when he tries to recover from being caught off guard while daydreaming, but Goro Majima doesn't fall for it and tells him to come out of his room. Seeing as it's his father, and he's Asian, it's probably to scream at him for not starting up a business when he was three years old like his little brother. Then call him a failure, after a mini hissy fit over his bubbling anxiety he can't focus on fake studying anymore. So he hits up the homie asking if they can chill over where he is. Finally we meet the last bum, Karube. Ooh, I see you, dropout got trip. Upon arrival, an already wasted Chota is also at Karube's bar, looking like he had the same thinking as Alice. I'm having a faint sense of foreboding because everyone wants to speak about their dreams. Like, dreaming is fine but if Alice joined in on share and tell himself, then a massive flag would be going up right now like little Timmy in sweatpants. Although it's not huge right now, I got a little half chub of a flag going off at the moment. We get to see how Alice and Karube met in a timely flashback. Snapping back to the present, Alice continues to bitch about life like a spoiled brat due to his relatively peaceful life. Okay wow, something is, definitely, gonna happen. That foreboding is way too strong not to. Getting some fresh air for a bit, the gang steps outside and heads towards Shibuya. Why? Dunno. Anyways, after walking for a bit they finally arrive and decide to sit on a train station bench. Which is probably some homeless guy's bed so I've watched where you put your hands Alice. It's finally Alice's turn in, share and tell, and apparently wants to get away. Ooh, what a shocker. Somehow we transition to zombies and Karube thinks Alice would survive in a zombie apocalypse. Hmm? Fireworks? 